So it it seems to me that that each generation, I wasn't expecting to have to take this on. I you know, and I'm I, I think my dad wouldn't have wanted wanted this for his child either. You know, and and I'm looking now to the next generations, my daughters, and wondering what are they going to have to have to fight. The racism doesn't seem to be uh, decreasing; it seems to be increasing, and and so it just it's it's disheartening to always have to address it like this. And I don't think that Canada is learning. I don't think that Canadians uh, even believe that they're on stolen land. I think that the learning curve for them is too high. And I think we need to we need to talk about having our own countries now. And I think we need to have our own territories. And, and maybe Canada doesn't need to be Canada as it is. Hmm. Very interesting thoughts. I'd like to thank you very much for sharing your time with us. Christy Belcourt, uh, acclaimed artist, thank you so much. Thank you. I want to uh, get back to uh, our conversation around uh, your father, Kanus. Uh, the late Arthur Manuel was a fearless advocate, as we we're saying, in the provincial, national, international level about land claims, human rights, economic rights for Indigenous peoples. He spoke on our program many times. Here's a clip from a previous edition of In Focus in December 2014 when we were at the Assembly of First Nations election, where Arthur sat in a panel discussion and he talked about uh, National Chief Perry Bellegarde and what he'll need to do to lead the Assembly of First Nations? I think we need to talk about our right of governance, our right to our territory, our right to govern ourselves from that international perspective and not from the domestic Department of Indian Affairs yeah. point of view. And I think we need to work towards having a strong constitutional conference based upon that basis of our right to self-determination and quit just depending on the High Court, the Supreme Court for making decisions in this regard because they're in a contradiction because of their conflict of interest because they were created from that colonial doctrines of discovery. Hmm. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Go art. Yeah, there's so many internal systems that work against uh, Indigenous peoples as we've seen more and more now. That was just a, a little bit of uh, what Arthur, your father, could could just, you know, just explain so succinctly about how, uh, you know, stop crying on the shoulder of the man who stole your land is what he's uh, telling uh, uh, other, uh, other uh, First Nations uh, here in Canada. Are there any other thoughts that you want to share about the legacy of your father, Arthur Manuel Kanahus? Yes, um, <clears throat> I, really, I really enjoy that quote. You know, stop, stop crying on the shoulder of the guy who stole your land. And I believe that all of us have to do that. And this, this includes, when we're talking about Indigenous people across the country, it includes the Indian Act and it includes the band office and the, the, local, the local way that the Canadian government is, is still maintaining control over the Indians, control over the resources, the program and service dollars that are being stripped from our people and leaving our people in impoverishment. And then you have the mining companies that are coming in and the pipeline companies that are coming in and also destroying our land and leaving us even further impoverishment. And I think this is the way that the government is able to go in and, and somewhat co-opt the chief and councils to have them sign these deals with the pipelines. And one of the things that my father had said was, was that um, it's the indigenous people, it's the grassroots people at the grassroots level that are the rightful title holders and are the pr proper decision makers. They're the ones that are the hunters, the berry pickers, the medicine harvesters, the basket makers. They're the ones that use the land and they're the ones that are most impacted and they're the ones that need to speak out um, against anything that's out there to destroy them. And right now that's Canada. And they're bringing the investors in, they're bringing the pipeline companies in, and we need to address both these corporations and Canada and the provincial government and be able to stand up and say no. There's no process to say no. There's only a process for people to say yes right now. And I really enjoy and respect what Christy Belkert had said is that, is that um, we need an, a new way, a new creative way for us to be able to be independent and be sovereign. And one of the things I heard from one of the women who do frontline work here in Winnipeg is that our children are our sovereignty. They inherit that sovereignty from the beginning and, and we pass that on to them and we're passing on them a very big job right now and a big responsibility if we don't take our um, turn right now and really make an impact and really change the way that this country looks at Indigenous people and really take back control of our land and our territories.